will praise you in the morning. I will praise you in the evening and worship you, O oh Lord. I will lift your name on high. You are my shelter. Good afternoon once again, brothers and sisters. We are in live intercession once again. So praise the Lord that you could join me, all of you prayer warriors and intercessors. Uh, there are so many things, of course, that uh, we want to be able to uh, pray for. Uh, but first of all, let me just greet uh, the people who are watching us right now to join us in our live intercession. So. Uh, let me welcome Alta Gracia Lau, uh, Cynthia Castaneda of Higher Rock, Sandy Noel, Lydia Reyes, Debbie Baggio, Nina Alex, Naomi Yap, uh, Chris Henry Abalie, Ruth Seno, Charila Spinney, Para Alazas, Lucille CJ, uh, of course we have Arnel and Lani Aragon from our church in Living Word UK. Uh, Elizabeth Violanda, how are you? Margie from Carmen Cebu, Lynn Scheib, Lucia Gapus, of course, from our church in the United Kingdom as well. Uh, Sister Kathy, and I assume that uh, Jingle is with her right now. Uh, Jean, also would like to greet you. Caroline Amor with Jo Marie. Uh, Lynn Libres, how are you? Uh, also, Hasin Tuchu from Australia. Uh, Daisy Bunao Alvarado from OMF, uh, Jean Labrim from Long Beach, uh, California, Maria Sayud from BGC, Jean Tujanko, Edgar Gapus, our pastor in uh, UK, Eric Rosales, Olive Cabalquinto, Jessica Sabior, Cherry Nieras from Los Angeles, California. Nenita Velasquez, Alta Gracia Lau, Fane Dell, Benny Antigua, Floro Pagikan, our pastor in uh, uh, Kidapawan. Praise the Lord that you already received your copies of uh, More Than Enough. Praise the Lord. Uh, Rosalia Tan, Virginia from Guadalupe, uh, Fe Quijano from Davao City, Jessica Sabior, Ites Sanchez, Yang Bulusan with Pastor Bong Bulusan. Praise the Lord. Maricar Diaz from Daan Bantayan. Rodrigo from Coronadal, South Cotabato. Praise God. Also, Roland de la Serna from Masbate. Uh, Elnora Aquino from Butuan. Julie Guatno. Praise the Lord, Loy Hermoso. So, thank you so much for uh, tuning in to our program we are really blessed uh, that you are with us uh, this uh, afternoon uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us and uh, we'd like to thank the lord for uh, the way things have been moving in relation to our book uh, more than enough we have been able to sell more than 2,000 copies already praise the lord in such a very short period of time uh, we have more than 2,000 copies sold. I think maybe closing in on the 2,500 mark. But what really excites me is that uh, we are sponsoring more than 1,000 pastors. Uh, 
we have gotten sponsorship from uh, various people uh, from different churches and they have uh, received the burden from the Lord to sponsor the pastor. So we have been distributing the books uh, to many pastors already here in Cebu and also uh, with the CCM churches uh, we have already been distributing the books and it has been reaching many parts uh, not only of the Philippines but also other parts of the world. Uh, some of our copies are in Hong Kong uh, the other copies are already in uh, the United Kingdom. So praise the Lord. It's moving not only nationwide, but also internationally. So praise the Lord uh, for that. We'd also like to thank uh, people who have been sponsoring um, politicians or uh, government officials as well. We have reserved, I think, around 40 copies already for uh, government officials we'd like to increase that even more and also with the pastors we want to be able to give uh, or to gain a sponsorship of about maybe 400 plus more or about 500 so that we could meet uh, our goal of uh, sending copies to 1,500 pastors and of course uh, I'd like to Welcome some more people who just uh, tuned in. Uh, let me welcome in our midst, uh, Loy Hermoso, Marlene Cambao from Hong Kong, Donny Sardilias, Jackie De La Serna from uh, Masbate, of course, Jessila Galocino from Quezon, Bukidnon, Aileen Bernardo, Norma Falcon from uh, Bohol, Giovanni Almasan. Donny Sardilias, Eric Rosales, our pastor, of course, in uh, San Fernando, Elmer Racines, praise the Lord, and Emmy Asensi. I'd like to share to you other uh, answered prayers that we received uh, coming from Pastor Jo Marie Kusai of Living Word UK. Uh, the sister of Pastor Jo Marie has been discharged from the hospital. His sister testified that at her critical stage, she felt the prayers of the saints. Glory to God. And then from Sister Gloria Dawson, by God's grace, Brother John is getting better. His bed sore is almost healed. Uh, they are, however, requesting continued prayers for the restoration of his body and his strength. Now, also another praise support coming from Miriam de Vera, uh, praise and glory be to God. Negative po ang results sa swab test ni Faye. Thank you kaayo sa prayers niyo po. So magpa-admit me this Saturday after sa blood transfusion niya at ma-okay na ang dugo niya. Schedule na siya for operation. Baka Monday na po. Please pray for Daniel Faye's operation this Monday. Praise the Lord. Another praise report. Uh, from Marlene Kambao. Hello po, Ate Marie and Pastor Mel. Thank you po sa prayer sa sister-in-law ko na operahan na po siya kanina. Praise be to God. Successful po ang operation. Pray na lang po sa fast recovery at sa result ng biopsy. Uh, salamat po. God is forever faithful. Thanks po sa prayers. Pakipray din po si Mama kasi naka-lockdown po sila sa house ng kanilang neighbor uh, dahil merong isang police na nag-positive sa COVID. So, uh, praise the Lord for the praise reports and also, of course, there are some more prayer requests. Uh, we'd like to express our deepest condolence, by the way, to the family of Counselor Jerry Guardo uh, for the passing away of their mother, I think, last, uh, last night or yesterday as a result of cardiac, uh, cardiac arrest. So uh, may God comfort the grieving family at this time and we, we pray that God's grace might be uh, upon you. So praise the Lord for that. We continue to greet a few more people who are tuning in. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, we'd like to welcome Seloy Misa, also Doreen Del Mundo, my mother-in-law, Mami Lulu, how are you? Together with Loli, Doreen, Fe Joan Gavas from our church in UK, Fatima Solis, Cristiano Rodriguez, 
also Lani Fuentes is watching us. So uh, praise the Lord for that. And um, right now we will be closing our series on how to overcome depression and anxiety. And then next week, I am planning to do a new series. We will be doing a series on uh, the seven churches in the book of Revelation. I think this is a good supplement uh, for our table talk because we are doing the book of Revelation, of course, uh, in our table talk. But I began my study in Revelation chapter 4. So we did not tackle the churches because I wanted to focus on eschatology. So I decided that uh, maybe just to complete your understanding of the book of Revelation, I will uh, teach you as well on the seven churches. So let's expect that. Uh, in the following week. Praise God. So right now, I'd like to bring you to Psalm 119. That will be our uh, subject matter for today. So can you please uh, uh, open your Bibles to Psalm 119 verses 25 to 32. And... Uh, we will be reading verses 25 to 32. It says here, My soul cleaves to the dust. Revive me according to your word. I have told of my ways and you have answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts so I will meditate on your wonders. My soul weeps because of grief. Strengthen me according to your word. Remove the false way from me and graciously grant me your law. I have chosen the faithful way. I have placed your ordinances before me. I cling to your testimonies. O Lord, do not put me to shame. I shall run the way of your commandments for you will enlarge my heart. So right now, may I request all of us to please bow our heads and close our eyes as we pray for God's blessing upon his word. Heavenly Father, we thank you and bless you for this afternoon once again, this afternoon of prayer and intercession. And Lord, please guide our study today and guide our intercession. Let uh, everything be guided by the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And we trust, Lord, that from beginning all the way to the end, you will be the one to take over this segment this program O lord so that your name might be glorified and our prayers through the holy spirit might be answered and lord we pray for your blessing upon your word i pray for myself that you might anoint and empower me let your name be glorified in jesus name amen and amen praise the lord now depression is something that besets uh, everybody including the most uh, spiritual people and that includes the psalmist who wrote psalm 119 and so at times you might think that uh, you are already spiritually mature and that uh, you have been able to overcome a lot of things in your life you've been very victorious and you might think that you have become immune to anxiety and depression but so many men of God have experienced depression including many Bible characters such that uh, some of them even wanted to be removed from their human existence and to be promoted to heaven uh, we find of course the example of Moses uh, who wanted to die because of the millions of people who were complaining against him in the wilderness uh, of course we have around two to three million people following moses in the wilderness and they were all grumblers and complainers and finally it got into the nerves of uh, moses and he actually prayed to the lord lord take me or blot my name from the book of life and the same thing is true in the case of Elijah. Elijah, after a great, great victory um, over uh, the prophets of Baal, 
was being hunted down by Jezebel. And he became so frustrated thinking that he alone was serving God in the northern kingdom of Israel. And he also wanted uh, to be taken home to be with the Lord. And then uh, in the New Testament, we have the example of Paul who tells us in one of his letters that he despaired even of life. So even the best among us do experience times of depression, times wherein we feel like we want to go home and give up and quit on this life. And we also have other examples uh, all throughout church history. You have the example of J. Hudson Taylor. Of course, he was the, uh, the one who pioneered China Inland Mission, now known as OMF, Overseas, Overseas Missionary Fellowship. And, um, of course, he was a mighty man of God. God used him mightily. He pioneered a work in China, which is up until today being talked about. It is actually unparalleled. However, he had a nervous breakdown. And we are told uh, in some narratives that uh, he recovered from this uh, nervous meltdown in Geneva, that is in Switzerland. And then, of course, you're probably familiar with uh, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, the Prince of Preachers. Uh, he had several bouts of uh, gout, and uh, there were times that he had severe pain. And uh, I recall a particular time when he slept for uh, 48 hours, if I'm not mistaken, and his wife just uh, allowed him to, to sleep for 48 long hours because... Previous to that, he was experiencing so much pain. And so this was a welcome relief. So he woke up after two days. But, you know, his bouts uh, with uh, gout uh, really brought depression in his heart. And another incident that brought depression in his heart was uh, when the building uh, that they had, Metropolitan Tabernacle, got burned down. And there were some people who died as a result of that. And uh, some people say that he did not recover emotionally from that incident. And then, of course, you have the example of D.L. Moody. Uh, D.L. Moody had the same experience. I think uh, his church building also got burned down in the famous uh, Chicago fire. And then we have uh, the example, of course, of Martin Luther. Martin Luther uh, became so depressed as a result of the many wars that he had with the uh, Roman Catholic Church. And uh, finally, under duress, he became so despondent and his wife, Catherine, noticed that uh, he was very depressed. And so one time, Catherine went upstairs and uh, dressed herself in black as if she was going to the morning house and she went down the stairs and and Martin saw her and said where are you going and she said I'm going to go to a funeral oh who, whose funeral are you going to and she said I'm going to go to the funeral of God boy that cost uh, uh, Martin Luther to be righteously indignant and he said how can you say that how can you speak blasphemy and Catherine, in wisdom, just merely said, Well, the way you have been acting, it is as if God is dead. So just by showing to you all these examples of uh, biblical characters and uh, great men and women of God in church history, we see that no matter how, how spiritual you are, even if some people might consider you a spiritual legend, um, you know, you could, you could still go through depression. And by the way, just to plug in my book once again, More Than Enough, uh, you will find many stories there that will help you overcome anxiety and depression. That is why I really feel that this book is a book for these times, a book that will be a blessing to a lot of people. And so I'm really happy that uh, the sales are really going up. By the way, I'm not going to receive anything. All the royalties will go to the church. But I'm just excited because 
I have a message to share in that book and many things that you will find there will help you overcome depression. In fact, there was a testimony of one sister who was riding a jeepney and reading the book. And as she read the book, she said that her feelings lightened up because previous to that, she was going through a period of depression. So anyway, we go now to our study of uh, Psalm 119. And, you know, I can break down this sermon into three very neat parts. We're going to talk about the problem, and then we're going to talk about the solution, and then the resolution. So the problem, the solution, and the resolution. Now let's begin with verse 25, and let's read one phrase here. It says, my soul cleaves to the dust. Now, this is obviously a hyperbole. Now, a hyperbole, of course, is an exaggeration because uh, who is it that could possibly say literally that his soul cleaves to the dust? It doesn't happen. Your soul does not cleave to the dust. So we have to take this as an exaggeration of the psalmist's depression that he was beginning to feel inside. He was feeling as if his soul was cleaving on to the dust. And this is what happens. When you and I are going through depression, what happens is it blocks our view of God. And what we see in front of us, I don't mean literally, what we see in front of us is our problem. And when we see this problem, we are unable to see God in the horizon. We are unable to see uh, from God's perspective. So that is what depression actually does. And what happens is we don't see God's might, God's power, God's majesty, God's goodness. We are unable to see that all we see is our problem. Now, sometimes the problem that we might have may not even be that big a problem. But there is a saying that we tend to make mountains out of mole hills. Again, let me repeat that expression. We tend to make mountains out of mole hills. In other words, we have this incy wincy tiny bit of problem, and yet we magnify it. No? It's like um, we're, we're looking at a microscope, and we see the, uh, the bacteria, the amoeba, but using the lens of the microscope, it appears so gigantic. And sometimes that is what happens with us. Minute problems appear to be gigantic when we use the microscopic lens of our uh, human frailty and human emotions. And so that's what happens. And, you know, we begin to have a sense of hopelessness, and this sense of hopelessness brings about depression. That is why hope is, is very important. Uh, people need hope. They need to be able to cling on to something that they can rely on. And if people are unable to cling on to anything, that's when they become hopeless. And that's when people begin to think about suicide or uh, many other things. Now in verse 28, we see again a reiteration of the problem because here the psalmist is saying my soul weeps because of grief my soul weeps because of grief now obviously this is one of the expressions of depression weeping when you and I uh, are depressed we tend to give vent to those emotions and what happens is we start weeping and crying and again, what we see here is a sense of hopelessness and the repetition, by the way, of depression expressed in, in different terminologies or in different phrases somehow intensifies our understanding of the depth of the depression of the psalmist. Of course, the question is, what was it that was causing the depression of the psalmist? And I'd like to have us a look at the context because the context will give us an idea for uh, the reason behind the depression. 
Now, in verse 23, it says, Even though princes sit and talk against me, your servant meditates on your statutes. So, when we talk about princes, we're talking about very powerful people who were plotting against the psalmist. They were plotting certain things against the psalmist and even talking against him. And obviously, you know, when you become a victim of powerful people or a victim of gossip and slander, it can be a very, very depressing thing. I mean, we all, I, I don't like to include myself, but human beings uh, tend to love gossip until the gossip is about them. Then they start hating gossip. But when they're gossiping about other people, it's fine with them. In verse 42, we find another reason for the depression. It says, So I will have an answer for him who reproaches me. Now, there were people who were reproaching uh, this person or this psalmist, most probably because of his beliefs. Most especially because probably of his uh, religious or spiritual convictions. And sometimes uh, people can attack us and persecute us because they think that um, we're uncompromising. And people love compromise. And they hate people who are not flexible. They hate people who are uncompromising. And maybe you want to stand for your convictions. And the result of that is hatred and anger. And maybe there are some people who are persecuting you, attacking you, reproaching you. That is possible. And so the big question is, what do you do in a situation like that? Well, again, it's very simple. And sometimes, you know, I think we have complicated the Christian life. Uh, sometimes I attend seminars and conferences. And of course, you are impressed with uh, their outlines. You are impressed with... Um, what they present, you know, they, they have a very good presentation of uh, how to do certain things or maybe how to overcome depression and so on and so forth. And while these things might be, sim I mean, might be impressive, sometimes I, I feel that we have complicated things and not simplified it for people. And sometimes it's, it's really very simple. Like uh, when you and I talk about becoming victorious over sin, the plain and simple solution to that is to die to yourself and to choose God all the time. But then again, uh, people try to uh, embellish uh, their thoughts. And in the end, you know, they turn out to be very vague and very hazy about what they're trying to present. And so here the psalmist is quite clear. He is very succinct uh, in his expressions. Notice his solution here. He just simply says, Revive me according to your word. Revive me according to your word. Now the psalmist knew here where to turn for hope when he had depression, and it was to turn to God's word. That is why, again, a healthy diet of God's word is very helpful in overcoming depression. I recall there was a man who actually lost his mind. He became insane. And there was a Christian who thought that maybe the Word of God will cure him and heal him from his insanity. And what this Christian did was quite innovative. Uh, he put a blackboard in front of the bed of this insane person. And it was Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Um, he makes me lie down beside still waters. He leads me into green pastures and so on and so on. And this insane man was reading that text every single day of his life. Psalm 23, Psalm 23, Psalm 23. And guess what happened? He snapped out of his insanity. He snapped out of his insanity. And all it took was the Word of God impressed upon his mind and upon his heart every single day. That is why I cannot overstate the importance of the Word of God in our spiritual lives. Jesus Christ himself said, 
Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So, bread provides physical nourishment, but sometimes what we really need is spiritual nourishment. And that can only come from the Word of God. Why? Because the Word of God is truth. And so, we have a secure, solid, and true foundation. It's not a shaky foundation. It's not a foundation standing on quicksand. It is a foundation that is standing on the solid rock of God's Word. So the psalmist knew where to turn to. Now, the Word, of course, is the answer that brings about revival or restoration or overcoming depression. Having said that, however, let us note that when we read the Scriptures, we need the illumination of the Holy Spirit. Oftentimes, we have neglected the Holy Spirit, but First John gives proper emphasis and importance to the Holy Spirit. When John the Beloved says that we do not need a teacher, now by that he doesn't mean that teachers are unimportant. What he simply says is that the primary teacher that we have is the Holy Spirit. So he says we do not need a teacher because we have the unction of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit guides us and leads us into all truth. That is why when we uh, read the Word of God, we have to pray to the Lord, Lord, illumine the Scriptures for me. Make me understand it. Make me comprehend it. And, and you, know, you will be amazed because when you pray that, God will just so, show to you treasures, spiritual nuggets that you have never ever seen before. And this is the reason why we read here the psalmist prayer expressed in two parallel phrases wherein he is praying for God to open his spiritual eyes that he might behold the things of God's word. Notice he says, teach me your statutes. And obviously he is praying for illumination of God's word. And then he says, make me understand. Make me understand the way of your precepts. So we need prayer for illumination of God's Word. I recall one uh, Bible student who was having great difficulty uh, in his uh, theological classes. It was really beyond him, beyond his um, mental and intellectual capacity. And, and he was becoming quite depressed that he could not understand the lessons that were being handed over to him. And, you know, with tears in his eyes, he started to pray to the Lord. Lord, help me, make me understand. And hallelujah, praise the Lord. God gave him wisdom, and uh, this student is still continuing on in his studies. And you know, God is a prayer answering God. Now, why do we need to pray for illumination? Well, let me show you 1 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning at verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning at verse 10, reads, For to us God revealed them through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God, which things we also speak not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. Now get this. But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. And get this. He cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. Uh, but he who is spiritual appraises all things, yet he himself is appraised by, by no one, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So there you go. We need the Holy Spirit for illumination. And um, quite a number of times, you know, you know, I've been reading the Bible for 36 years right now. And the amazing thing with me is uh, sometimes when I go back and read a familiar text, 
I see something quite uh, revelatory, something that is an eye-opener for me. It's just like a eureka moment. And I, I tell myself, how come I did not see this before? But I understand that is really a work of the Holy Spirit making you understand and comprehend the meaning of scriptures. That is why you cannot exhaust the Bible. That's why you have to read it every single day. So again, let me exhort and admonish you to, to have a healthy spiritual diet of God's word every single day. Now, the blessed assurance is that when we pray for God's illumination of his word, he will answer us. And once again, this is seen in two parallel thoughts that we find in Psalm 119. Notice what the psalmist said. I have told of my ways and you have answered me. So God answered his prayer for illumination. And then here it says, So I will meditate on your wonders. So the illumination that God gave to him, he calls the wonders of God. So in summary, it simply means revival comes when we know God's word in answer to prayer for illumination. We likewise see the connection of prayer in obtaining understanding of the Word of God. And, and that understanding is so precious because it causes you to be an overcomer. I recall just uh, one time I, I somehow woke up with uh, a little fear, a little apprehension in my heart in regard to uh, an issue that I was facing and obviously, of course, when you're facing issues, you're, you're facing some people who might be in opposition to you. But, you know, the Word of God just came upon my mind. And this is what God impressed upon me. He impressed upon me, the fear of man is a snare. And then He somehow spoke to me again, coming from the Word of God, do not seek the approval of men, but the approval of God. So that is the power of the Word of God illuminated. The Word of God that seemingly jumps out of the pages of the Bible and, and connects with your mind and with your heart. And faith is generated as a result of that. After all, what the Bible says is faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of Christ. Now that is not only true in the matter of salvation, that is true for us in our sanctification as well. So faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. So again, faith is so important because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, notice another prayer of the psalmist here. He says, strengthen me according to your word. Now, the psalmist knew where to uh, look for stability to be able to withstand depression. He was saying, strengthen me according to your word. That's one of the things that the Word of God is able to do. It strengthens you. Now, just a little uh, caveat here. You see, the stability is brought about not only by reading the Word of God, understanding it, but by obeying the Word of God. So if you're wanting to overcome your depression and you've read the Word of God, God has illuminated it to you, but you, you fall short of following through and obeying what God spoke to you, then you will not be able to overcome your depression. That is why Jesus said, Blessed is a man who hears the word of God and does it. So it's not enough that you hear God's word. You have to do it. You probably recall the parable of uh, a house built on sand, and then the house built on, on solid rock. The storms came. I mean, it was the same house, uh, the same storm, the same wind power, the same amount of, of rain was being poured out. And yet the difference was one house stood and the other one crashed down. And what was the reason? Well, nothing from above, but everything below. I'm talking about the foundation. One was built on sand and the other one was built on solid rock. And the lesson really in that parable is if you hear the word of God but 
don't obey it, you're like building your house on sand. But if you hear the word of God and obey it, you're building your house on solid rock. So if you want stability, you have to obey God's word. And again, you find this uh, explicitly stated by the psalmist. Notice what he says. I have chosen the way. I have placed your ordinances before me. I have chosen the way. I have placed your ordinances before me. So you will notice here the progression from illumination to obedience. And that's what needs to happen. And then here, another phrase we find, he says, I cling to your testimonies. He was holding on to God's word. Again, you see the progression from illumination to obedience. So again, it is not enough just to understand the word of God. You have to apply it. That's why so many people get depressed and they say, well, you know, I wonder why I've not overcome my depression. I attend Bible studies. I listen well to preachings. I do this and I do that. I, I read the Word of God day and night. I'm still depressed. Well, think about it. Take stock of your spiritual life. Maybe you have just accumulated knowledge. But knowledge needs to become wisdom. And wisdom is knowledge that is applied. And remember what the Bible says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So, unfortunately, I think one of the problems that we find among many people is that they do not have the fear of the Lord. Many do not have a relationship with God, and many do not have this reverence towards God, and therefore they don't have wisdom. And that is why, really, if you think about it, there is really simplicity in the Christian life. I mean, Jesus makes it very plain to us. The Word of God makes it very plain to us. And yet, we tend to complicate our spiritual lives. And in the end, we're still depressed, we're still hollow, we're still spiritually dry, and we wonder what's wrong. Well, maybe try applying God's Word in your life. Maybe that is what is lacking. Now, I like to uh, share to you that obedience does not come about of course, as a result of our own strength, but in answer to prayer once again. And interestingly, uh, you find the prayer of the psalmist here for God's strength. That is why uh, if you really have a look at the Old Testament, and most especially reading the Psalms, the Psalms of David most especially, you find the new covenant in operation among the Old Testament saints. And by that, I mean a changed heart, um, a heart of stone replaced by a heart of flesh, um, the Holy Spirit at work in their lives, not, not indwelling them, but from without working the work of sanctification. And they're still praying in the same way that the New Testaments are praying. Notice how the psalmist prays here. He says, remove the false way from me and graciously grant me your law. And then the psalmist also says, O Lord, do not put me to shame. So it's all about obtaining grace from God himself. Now, if you're a Christian and you say, I cannot overcome, you know what? You're, you're not operating in faith and you're not operating biblically. You need to renew your mind because you're supposed to be an overcomer. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so yes, you're supposed to be an overcomer. So spiritual strength comes because we hold on to God's word in answer to prayer. And we likewise see the connection of prayer in obeying the word. Now, the bottom line of this psalm is a resolution as a result of the power of God. I'd like to read to you a portion of what he says here. He goes, I shall run the way of your commandments, for you will enlarge my heart. I shall run. Now, when you're running towards something, what does that speak of? It speaks of intentionality. It speaks of determination. It speaks about passion. 
So what we find here is a resolution to obey God's commandments. And, and why? We're given the reason here. For you will enlarge my heart. And basically, enlarging my heart, I believe, is another phrase which could mean that so that you could restore me, revive me, uh, make me overcome this depression that I, I'm going through. So we're talking about revival and strength here. So the question I'd like to ask you is, are you facing depression today and don't know where to turn to? Is your problem blocking your view of God and you seem hopeless? Worry not. Turn to God in prayer for you to understand His Word and so that it will bring comfort and revival to your heart. But don't stop there. Obey God's Word. And don't just obey God's word. Be consistent. And that requires a resolution for you to obey God's word consistently, faithfully. And I tell you, the joy of the Lord will be your strength. So praise God for our study today. And uh, I'd like to give you a little time right now to uh, maybe talk to the members of your family uh, just to find out if uh, you have some prayer petitions among yourselves, um, please talk to the members of your family right now. And, uh, while you're talking to each other, let me just greet a few more viewers. Faye Canizal, Prime Jessamonte from UK, praise the Lord, Galvin Colliantes, uh, Nelia Tuliao from Iligan City, Virgie Solis, and Lin Shai Joy Labore. So thank you for uh, tuning in. So please uh, discuss this with your family. of your family here are a few uh, prayer requests uh, brother galvin colliantes is requesting prayer uh, for his sister estella she was not able to sleep last night uh, she was having uh, palpitations uh, she will be seeing a uh, cardiologist and so please uh, lift her up uh, in prayer uh, we'd also like to lift up in prayer uh, richelle belda's mother who has complicated asymptomatic UTI that is causing her kidneys to shut down. So let us pray for her. Let's also pray for her father whose PSA level is high and is also feeling very weak. Uh, let's pray for Sister Badet, uh, whose son underwent surgery for appendicitis and he has a heart condition as well. Uh, from Chirila Spinney, she is requesting for prayer for her uh, co-worker, Elena Roperos, who has cough and fever. Let's pray that God will heal her. Uh, also, let us lift up in prayer Teresa Filoteo. Uh, Sister Tere went through a major surgery because water was accumulating in her heart and she had difficulty breathing. And so uh, she had to have a surgery and she's right now in the ICU. She's now recovering. So please lift her up in prayer. Uh, we have some prayer requests from our pastor, Shirley Cruz. Um, they're praying that, uh, that they will be able to be protected from the Lord as they begin their mass gathering already. All right, so please pray for uh, their blessing, spiritual strength, and passion for the Lord. Also from Tata Manuel, our pastor in uh, Katayngan, uh, requesting prayers for the church in Living Word Kawayan to regather this coming first Sunday of October. All right, so let us pray for a blessed time. Uh, for Roland de la Serna of Living Word Placer, um, well, he wrote this in Tagalog, so. I hope you don't mind. I'll just read it in Tagalog because uh, 
I may have to translate it and I might not do a good job. So, he, he, this is his prayer. Uh, sa ngayon po, nakapapagpatuloy na po ang mga gawain sa church, pati po ang outreach sa bukid. At sa ngayon din po, patuloy naming pinapagawa ang church building dito sa Placer. And by the grace of God, praise the Lord, tapos na po ang uh, church building dito sa Placer. And uh, finishing sa loob na po at sa labas ang ginagawa. At ang prayer request po namin, Sister Marie, ay ang patuloy na provision ni Lord para sa ongoing church building. At sana po patuloy na palaguin sa Panginoon ang Christian life ng mga kapatiran dito. At ang prayer request namin, po na, namin para sa aming pamilya dito ay ang good health po and more grace and love. At prayer request din nila is uh, gamitin sila ng Panginoon sa radio ministry. All right. And then let's also pray for uh, some of the CCM pastors. I had a Zoom meeting with them. Jojo Garcia has a sciatic nerve. Uh, his uh, one one leg of his is not uh, is not uh, able to uh, function just as well as the other leg, and that is why the the muscles have atrophied, and he's been experiencing some pain. So let's pray for him. Let's also pray for uh, Pastor Bob, who's having an eye problem. His, his left eye is drooping. Uh, his doctors are suspecting certain medical conditions, and he needs an MRI. But uh, right now, they just have to wait because uh, it's very dangerous to go in the hospital right now in Manila, most especially for, because of the upsurge of the uh, uh, coronavirus. Also pray for all the COVID patients, pray for the Lord's healing and their salvation. Let's pray for people who have nothing to eat and those who are losing their jobs. Uh, please pray for the Lord's provisions upon their families. A lot of uh, Filipinos are, are suffering right now because of the recession and because of unemployment, inflation, and so on. So let's pray for them. Uh, let's pray for uh, Bacolod City and the entire Negros province. They're right now in ECQ. Uh, the the, um, the COVID-19 there is really surging. Uh, let's continue to pray for all the frontliners, government leaders, as they continually serve our people. Please pray for wisdom, guidance, protection, and provision from the Lord. And I guess it is no secret, for example, that the two mayors... Uh, in the south, uh, both of whom were Garcias, uh, brothers of uh, Governor Gwen Garcia, uh, died as a result of COVID-19. And uh, that came out in the papers and uh, that's how I knew about it. Um, and so even our government officials are being hit by COVID-19. And so we really need to pray for our government officials that God might protect them and God might supply wisdom for them. Uh, let's pray for all the uh, nations and the unreached people groups, pastors, evangelists, um, missionaries. Let's pray for endurance, uh, pray for a national revival and for a harvest of souls. So, yeah. So let's, uh, let's uh, come before the Lord. Let's just... Uh, Let's just seek His face right now. Praise the Lord. Let's begin praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear God. Thank you, dear Lord. We give thanks and praise to you because, Lord, our prayers are not in vain. Every time we come before you, you're paying attention to us. You're listening to us. You're listening to the hundreds of people who are praying together with me right now all over the world, all over the Philippines, oh Lord. And right now we are praying for revival upon all the churches, oh God, regardless of denomination. We pray, Father, for the purity of the gospel. We pray, Father, for anointing. We pray for repentance, revival, the spirit of intercession, the spirit of prayer. We pray for a harvest of souls, O God. We pray your blessing upon our pastors, 
uh, Sister Shirley, as they begin their mass gathering, uh, also uh, Brother Roland de la Serna, and also Brother Tata Manuel, O God, Lord, um, they, they ask prayers for their own churches, Lord. We, we pray, Father, that whatever they have asked of you, uh, whether it is material, like in the case of uh, uh, Brother Roland, for the finishing of their building, we pray for resources, O God. We pray, Father, that uh, you will preserve and protect them and that you will provide for them and for the church, O God, and that you will strengthen them, revive them spiritually. We pray also for the outreach church of uh, Brother Tata Manuel, that as they gather, Lord, this coming Sunday, your blessing will be upon them. Let your blessing be upon our church in Katayngan as well, O Father, and even in our church in Palawan, O God. We pray for Pastora Shirley, that you might strengthen her, give her wisdom. We pray, Lord, for your protection upon them, Lord, as they uh, start their mass gatherings. And we just lift up to you, Tere, uh, who just had surgery, heart surgery. We pray for your healing touch upon her, O God. We lift up in prayer, uh, Sister Stella Juliantes, Lord, um, that you might give wisdom to the doctor who will check her up. We pray that uh, she will be able to overcome her palpitations. We pray for all the COVID patients, O Lord, that your healing touch might be upon them. But more importantly, let them come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, even the frontliners, O God. Lord, let them seek your face. Let them turn to you. Lord, we pray for those who are hungry, those who are jobless. Lord, you are able to provide even in the wilderness. And we pray that people will just turn to you, seek your face. We pray for a harvest of souls, O God. And Lord, provide for the people. Bless them, O God. Minister to them, O Lord. We pray for the government officials, Lord, that you will protect them from, from COVID-19. Preserve and protect their lives. Give them wisdom. Root out corruption, O God. Root out injustice, O Father God. And we pray, Lord, that the agenda that our uh, government officials will have would be not personal agenda but but for the welfare of the people for the good of the people to serve the people oh god lord we pray for uh, the father and mother of uh, richel bell the lord that your healing grace might be upon them they're they're feeling weak at this time oh father we pray that um, your grace will be upon them strengthen them lord and I pray that you will also give grace to Sister Rachel to take care of them, give her strength. We pray for Sister Lynn Kiambao's mother who is uh, right now uh, on lockdown. We pray, Father, that uh, you will protect and preserve her, Lord, where she is. We pray for uh, the daughter of Sister Miriam, Lord, that uh, she would have a successful uh, operation this coming Monday. We pray for Brother John Dawson that he might be able to recover, O oh Lord. So, Lord, we just lift them up in prayer to you. Uh, for Sister Badeth, Lord, we pray for her son, Ken, who underwent surgery. We pray for your healing touch upon him, O oh Father. Let him recover. Uh, for Elena Roperos, Lord, who has cough and fever, we pray for your healing touch upon her, O oh God. And uh, we pray, Father God, that, that she will be able to recover as well in Jesus' name, O Lord. And Father, we just uh, pray also for some of my colleagues, Jojo Garcia. We pray that you might heal him from his sciatic nerve problem. And also Pastor Bob, Lord, uh, we don't know what is bothering him or troubling him. And he needs an MRI. We just pray for your healing touch upon him, O God. Uh, we submit him to you, Father. Um, we pray also, Lord, for uh, those who are jobless, that they might be able to find jobs. Lord, be the one to create jobs. We pray that you will bless the businesses, Lord, most especially the businesses that are handled by, by Christians, Lord. Let them prosper, Lord, even during this time. Lord, minister to our businessmen. Minister, Lord, to our employees, Lord. Let let your provisions come upon them we pray for provisions even for their children that they might 
be able to enroll in school, O God. O Father, just protect and preserve the families, O Lord. Um, Lord, we just pray for uh, the various unreached people groups, all the pastors, evangelists, missionaries, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that you will take care of the ministers of God. And Lord, bless them, O Father. We, we also lift up in prayer to you, Father, all the unreached peoples, O God. We thank you that there is a harvest of souls in Iran and Iraq, Lord, in the Middle East. Thank you that you are performing signs, wonders, and miracles and bringing people to a saving knowledge of Christ. We pray that will happen. We pray the world will realize that they need you, most especially in this pandemic crisis, O God. Oh, Father, just, just be with us. And Lord, whatever unspoken needs uh, people have, those petitions that they are praying for right now in their respective homes, Lord, be with them and bless them, O God. And Lord, just pray, Lord, that you will answer all their prayers. We continue to pray for our, all our online services and those of us who are already doing mass gathering. Lord, let your blessing and anointing be upon us, Lord. Continue, Lord, to, to arrest the situation here in Cebu, O oh God. And we pray that things might normalize. And we just wait for the day, Lord, that you will allow us to gather once again as a congregation. And we pray for Baholod as well, as they are having an upsurge, O oh Lord. Lord, control the situation and protect our members there. Protect uh, the Lord's lampstand, Pastor Ricky, his family, and our members, and all the other uh, churches there. Lord, let the spirit of intercession just continue, O God. O Father, we will trust you and believe you, O Lord. And we just give you thanks and praise in Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. So thank you so much for uh, staying with us. i uh, just like to greet a few more people who joined us. Jo Johanna Maranan, thank you so much. Billy Bores, uh, Jenny Peque, Mona Caballero, Rico Villacorta, Rodrigo Testa, Belinda Wong. Uh, we want to pray for Sister Belinda. She's asking for prayers for her gastric uh, reflux. Lord, we just pray for Sister Belinda. Let your healing touch be upon her, O Father God. Let her recover, O Father. Let her uh, uh, gastro organs, Lord, normalize. Lord, we will trust and believe you, O God. O Father, we, we also welcome Estela Pamaong, Keisha Christie, uh, also Mildred D., uh, Sister Tessie Gamboa, Joey Ursua. We pray for God's healing touch upon Joey Ursua as well, Father. Let your blessing be upon him. Mariter Bolo, Stephanie Miral Arstad from Norway. How are you? Praise God. Uh, she's asking for prayers, for God's protection upon her. Lord, protect her as she has night shifts, O Lord. Bless her, O God. And we pray for, uh, uh, for the healing of, uh, of, the, uh, of uh, the relative of Jenny uh, Peke right now, Father, uh, for her mother-in-law. Let your healing touch be upon her, O Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome, Ruel Carm Tampo, Susan Orsua, Loweline from Kasuntingan, Mandawe, our pastor Jeffner, Sapitola, downtown. Uh, praise the Lord. Thank you so much for watching us and joining us in prayers. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. So, yeah, uh, it's been a wonderful time. And as I mentioned to you, um, next week, uh, next Friday, we're going to start a new series. I'm going to talk about the seven churches. So I think this will be relevant, most especially because, uh, as I mentioned to you, when I taught on the book of Revelation, I started with Revelation chapter 4 because that's where the eschatology uh, part begins. And I wanted to concentrate on that. But anyway, we, uh, we have a lot of time uh, on our hands and I can expound right now on the book of Revelation again, but this time the seven churches every Friday. So I hope you can join me. And by the way, uh, let's thank the sponsors 
who have been sponsoring uh, pastors. We have more than 1,000 books uh, that have been given by sponsors for free to many pastors. So praise the Lord for that. Uh, we'd also like to thank the sponsors who are giving our more than enough books to politicians. We have 40 books that have been sponsored uh, for politicians. 30 have been designated already. Uh, the 10 will be given to uh, some more people, uh, hopefully here in Cebu as well. So um, praise God. Uh, thank you so much for, for tuning in. And uh, again, please, uh, please spread the word around. More than enough is being bought uh, by a lot of people. More than 2,000 copies have been sold already, maybe close to 2,500 already. And we're just so blessed with uh, the sales. Uh, and again, I don't receive anything. Uh, all the royalties will go to the church. I just want it, the message to go out. This is about overcoming trials. And uh, that's what we need right now. So my team, my wife Marie and my son AJ, bid you goodbye. God bless you all. We'll see you next time.